Hello and welcome. On offering today at your fast evolving and enlightening icon on air program is our direction to show you practical ways and means at leveraging accounting knowledge and skills to make money. Oh yeah, you heard me right, to make money. And to show, oh yeah, let me say, to navigate us in this proper direction is a brilliant entrepreneur known as the queen of simplified accounting. She has sold over 28,000 accounting ebooks and courses. Of course, trained over 5,000 business owners on accounting. And of course, she is the founder of Accounting Hub, Nigeria's leading bookkeeping firm. I speak of Chioma Ifeanyi as a Mrs. BSc. MSc, MBA, ACTI, and FCA. The woman who passionately teaches accountants about the business of their skills. We shall unveil more on our guest speaker at her question and answer segment very shortly. Also on this offering today, we show you a few advanced about the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, your iconic icon, and more about membership, a few information on our diaries, we call social diary. Please stay connected. I mean, stay online here as we shall be back with you very shortly. Welcome back. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Chioba Ifai Eze to our Icon on Air. Madam, you are most welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. Beautiful. What a mouthful. What a subject. A leveraging accounting knowledge and skills to make money. And I quickly just want us to get on the way, because I think it's quite an encompassing subject for this course. Can you, by way of a general overview, by way of introducing us to this subject, clearly so that we can get a general overview of the topic and clearly appreciate the discussion for today? Yes. All right. So, um, Accountants, just like all other professionals, acquire knowledge and skill. Now, the ultimate reason why you go acquiring knowledge and skills is to build a livelihood. You want to make money out of it. But interestingly, the discussions around the money-making side of a professional is not as loud as the professional side of a professional. So he hears more about his skills, 
how much skills and how much knowledge he needs to acquire, how, much, how many exams he needs to write and write. But the discussions around monetizing his skill and his knowledge are very minimal. Now, this side is what I call the business of accounting. You've learned all of this skill and all of this knowledge. How about monetizing it? So I feel that every professional, whether you're an accountant or an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor, there is a business side to your knowledge and your skills that you really should get talking about. And I call it the business of accounting. So as an accountant, you should honestly talk and pursue the business of accounting. The business so really of accounting. <laughs> the biz accounting is business. Professions are business, no doubt about that. And the common denominator, of course, is money, sustainable money, whether you're looking at it from your normal cash flow, you are in retirement, you need to continue to sustain your life, you know, your, your ability to look at working capital. So making money quite right it's a topic that everyone loves to hear about please tell us uh, madam how exactly can accounting professionals apply their knowledge and skills to make money and create wealth hmm. you know i love questions like this they sound very easy how can an accounting professional make money somebody is sitting around what kind of question is that isn't that easy enough <laughs> don't we all know how we're supposed to make money but there's an interesting twist to it so yes, an accountant can make money primarily in two ways. You either teach the accounting skill or knowledge or you offer accounting services. Now, you either do this in paid employment, that is you work for someone else, or as a business, you work for your own self, right? This is how an accountant can make money. And I'm sure we all know this. But this isn't really the twist that we're looking for. There's a fundamental to making money as an accountant that is missing. And I like to call it the element of scale. Accountants, yes, they understand I can either work as an accountant or I can offer accounting services or I can teach accounting. But they always, most times, miss out the element of scale. How can I serve 500 businesses? How can I train 2,000 accountants? How can I make more than... 100,000 Naira, which this SME wants to pay me. This SME wants me to file their taxes every month. They are not going to pay more than X amount. But I need to make much more than this. What can I do? The element of scale. So I believe that that's really the part that is missing when accountants think about how they can make money. They always miss out the element of scale. Yes, they understand. I can teach. I can work, I can offer services, but they always forget I need to scale it up if I need mm. to make the kind of money that needs to sustain my livelihood. Beautiful point, and that is poignant. The elements of scale, scaling it up and then understanding it properly. Now let's get into a bit of numbers because I know for a fact that a 2017 survey by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics and the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, as you know, called that SMIDAN for short, indicated that there were over 41.5, slightly over 41, close to 42 million micro, small and medium sized entities in Nigeria. Hmm. Quite a handful of a number. What opportunities exist in this informal sector for professional accountants? Mm. So I'd like to use your numbers to answer this question. 41.5 million SMEs in Nigeria and growing. Now let's take an estimate of how many professional accountants we have. ICANN probably has in the range of 55,000. I don't know how many Anan has. I don't know how many CPAs, I don't know how many ACCAs, but let's estimate that in all we have 200,000 professional accountants. Now, let's look at numbers. 200,000 professional accountants are called to serve over 41 million SMEs and growing. It therefore means that each of them is called 
to serve no less than 200 organizations. I like to use the word organizations because they may be businesses, they, be non, they may be non-for-profits, they may be anything. So I use the word organizations, 200 for each professional accountants. Now, inside of these 200,000 professional accountants, I have estimated, not all are in practice. Some don't work, don't do accounting. They just, maybe they run a farm or a bakery or any other business, right? It tells you that the opportunities for me as a professional accountant in the SME space in Nigeria is massive. Only me, I am called to do no less than 200 businesses. If we estimate properly, I am called to do no less than 500 because in the 200,000 professional accountants in Nigeria, a lot of us are not in practice. So I am called to do no less than 500 businesses if we must all be able to offer professional accounting to the SME number in Nigeria. Massive. Massive. It is to even think about the fact that every business has some form of accounting, no matter how crude it is. Even if it is one mama writing in a book, it is some form of accounting. Mm. Every mm. formal business is looking for an accountant. Mm. Massive, massive. The mm. organization in your church has poor records. Your, the, the, the old boys association you belong to has poor records. Mm. Everywhere you look around you, the building that they are doing across your street is losing inventory. The bit everywhere you the block industry behind your house, the boys are stealing cement everywhere. Massive opportunity for the professional accountants all around him. Massive opportunity, and that wow. is to add the number that I am called to serve no wow. less than 200, 300, 500 businesses. I alone I am called to serve. Wow. Fantastic. You said massive. Accountants count in terms of massiveness. Developmental economics say mammoth. In other words, um, the world is the oyster where we just need to go climb and ensure that we succumb. Still talking about numbers, madam. Um, the rate of unemployment uh, in Nigeria is over 35%, according to numbers that are published. Now, what should a professional accountant be doing to exit this unemployed population? Hmm. You know, I'm going to say something very, <laughs> very unpopular. You know, unemployment is it's not real for everyone. It's artificial for me. And I believe that... Um, the only way for an accountant to escape this unemployment that everyone talks about is to have the right skills, to skill up. Every day, employers are seeking accountants. Every day, people are looking to hire accountants. You almost need to do 30 interviews to get one good accountant that you would work with. Something is wrong. The skill is missing. Now, these businesses that are looking for accountants, there's something they are looking for. They are not just looking for an accountant. They are looking for what I call a plug-and-play accountant. Come in, know the right technology to use, know how to do payroll, know how to use software, know how to file taxes, know how to make a budget, know how to prepare financial statements. They are looking for plug-and-play. They are not looking for, please, take me, I'm a fast learner. Please, learn it outside and come in. That's what they are looking for. Most SMEs are only able to hire one accountant if they are able to. So there is no room for, I'm, I'm a fast learner. Who is going to teach you? There's no accountant in that system waiting to teach you. So you have to skill up, have the skill, and then you'll be highly taught. So the way out of the unemployment market is to become that plug-and-play accountant that they are looking for. Ask yourself, what are the things that an accountant does in a business. Make a list and go and learn each of those things one by one. An accountant does payroll. Do you know payroll? An accountant file, computes and files taxes. Do you know how to? An accountant makes budget at the beginning of the year. Do you know how to make a budget? An accountant prepares financial statements every month. Do you know how to? 
If you don't, please go and look for the skill. And that's the way to exit the unemployment market. Awesome point. Uh, uh, madam, look for the skills, get the skills, or Upgrade your skills, part of the things that the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, through their educational program, continuous learning, has always preached. Um, but let's look at another flip side to this same conversation. Uh, and I, I'd like to ask you, do you think accountants, the ones we call solution providers to businesses, blog at best, do you think they are adequately rewarded monetarily? Hmm. Interesting question. Do I think accountants are rewarded <laughs> properly monetarily? I would say that I think accountants are rewarded in the volume in which they demand to be rewarded. You hmm. need to demand to be rewarded. The services that we provide are intangibles. People do not like to pay for professional services. You hear people say, uh-uh, I go pay lawyer big money. Is it not just to sign his signature on that document? He doesn't care that the lawyer has to read it, think through any clauses that can you know, be implicated. He just all he sees is that the lawyer has to append the signature and he feels it is just you know just one cheap amount. You even hear people looking for accountants for a monthly basis of 20,000 naira. They are willing to pay you the fee they pay a house help, a cleaner. So naturally, um, SMEs and a lot of people are willing and are going to ask to pay you peanuts. Mm. But with the level of skill and expertise and the footprints that you drop behind, you will demand not to be paid peanuts. Mm. And yes, there will be a lot of people out there who are ready to pay higher to have you. Mm. I always mm. use myself as an example. I tell my friends that I've never looked for a job. From when I left the university, I got an award into the first job. I, you know, on and on, all of my job, I'll be sleeping. Somebody will call me. At a point, my friends were even using me to, you know, to make money. I need a, a good accountant. Oh, I'll bring one for you, but I'm going to charge you 200K. <laughs> they will actually, I'll be wondering why this company is calling me. I didn't submit anything. A company will call me. I'll go for interview. Then when I come back, a friend will go, ah, Choma, I hope you wowed them. I say, ah, ah, how did you know I went somewhere? Ah, I submitted your name. I beg, I beg. Wow them, oh, my fee is 200K. Then that's when you realize, wait a minute. <laughs> my friends are making money off me because they feel, oh, Choma is a good accountant. Let me recommend her. You, you pay me this and I know she'll be good, you know. So really and truly, you demand, you demand what you earn by your skill, by your footprints. You demand what you earn. Wow, super. Um, like they say, if you pay if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, but you mm -hmm. demand. And that's exactly what I'm hearing you, you say, with the kind of confidence and the skill that you get. Okay, what, madam, would you say are some of the things that you see professional accountants doing wrong in their journey of trying to make money from their accounting knowledge and skills? You know, <laughs> I actually wrote a list that I wanted to read out at this, you know, because even if you didn't ask this question, I came here to say, look, there are too many things you're doing wrong and I have a list I want to share. So I'm so glad that this question came up. So I'll share with you eight things that I listed out that accountants are doing wrong in their journey of monetizing their knowledge. Number one, they are not listening to the markets. Mm. The, market, the market has a voice. The market is saying what they want and an accountant is saying another thing. The market says we have poor records everywhere. I have no records. I don't know my profit. I don't know my inventory. The accountant is saying, I want to go and write another exam. I want to go. The accountant is saying something very different from what the market is saying. Mm. The next thing I like to say that they are doing wrong is, of course, we've talked a lot about not skilling themselves up, but most importantly, not skilling up yourself in line with the, what the market is seeking. What is the market looking for? Do you have skills in that line? So first you listen to the market, then you go and acquire the skills that satisfy what the market is seeking. 
Number three, that accountants are doing wrong in their, in their journey to monetizing is not niching down. I meet an accountant. What do you do? I do tax. I do bookkeeping. I do accountancy. I do this. I do that. They will mention a ton of things they do. What exactly is your core strength? Why don't you niche down? Pick one thing or two things and do it excellently well. I am a QuickBooks expert. I deploy QuickBooks for, I've deployed QuickBooks for 500 businesses. How amazing is that resume? Then, oh, I offer all, all accounting services. Just ask me anything. You look like a jack off. But if you can niche down, I find that when you check accountants outside of Nigeria, in the US, in Canada, they always are experts in one particular software. You see an accountant tell you, I'm a zero expert. I'm a QuickBooks expert. I'm a Sage expert. But here we say we do all of them. We don't niche down. We try to be everything. We try to do all sorts. If, you, if an accountant sends you a proposal, there's a list of 20 different services that he says he does. He's not an expert in any, and he doesn't quickly come to mind when you think of any. So today, when people call me, everyone who calls me is seeking a sage expert. And that's why they are calling me, because there's something they remember about me, mission down. Of course, number four, we have talked about scale. Another thing accountants are doing wrong is not thinking about scale. I am called to serve 200, 300, 500 businesses. How am I going to do it? What kind of technology do I need to do it? What kind of processes do I need to put in place to allow me to deploy accounting software in three days, four days, one week, so that I can deploy for 20 businesses in a month, so I can deploy 100 businesses in a year? What do I need to put in place? Is it people? Is it technology? Is it processes? Is it checklists? Is it templates? What do I need to put in place to allow me scale? We are not thinking of scaling. The next thing accountants are doing wrong in their journey to monetizing is not focusing enough on technology. Oh, I, I've never heard of that too. I, I don't know. Why don't you explore tools? As I am now, I want to explore every tool. If you send me a form to fill, you may like click and fill the form. I'm checking out the tool of that form I filled. If you invite me to an online meeting in a platform I've never seen, once I'm done, I'm checking, ah, what does this platform do? Yesterday, I, I ordered creams online and the lady used a form called Cognito Form. Immediately, I finished the ordering process. I was Googling Cognito Form. What does it do? What's the price? What are the features? You know, I was already checking it out. We need to open our minds to technology and keep exploring more and more technology tools. Because honestly, if you need to scale, technology is the answer. Number six thing that I think accountants don't do enough in their journey to monetizing their accounting knowledge and skill is they are not selling themselves properly. They are not selling themselves properly. A young accountant comes to you looking for a job or a place to intern. I hear, say, I'm looking for where to train. Excuse me, can you at least tell me what you have to offer me? Can you say, oh, I am good in this. I will give you this. Please, in exchange, train me. I'm looking for a good training place. You're, we're always looking for good training. What are we giving those good training places? This is, I'm talking about those in career, how they sell themselves. Then those in business. How are, are you, are you coming on platforms like this and speaking? Are you writing online? Are you educating on social media? Or are you just writing proposals and waiting for referrals? If you are an accountant in practice and all your clients come from referrals, I'm glad to announce to you that you're very bad in marketing. You're very bad in marketing. If all your clients are coming because somebody had to refer you, not because they found a write-up or because they listened to you speak or because you were educating somewhere, nothing, just... Someone has to refer you before you find a new client, then you're really bad at marketing or selling yourselves. Accountants need to learn how to sell themselves. Number seven thing that I feel accountants are doing wrong is they are not learning business. They are not learning business. If you must make money with your accounting skill and knowledge, you need a bit of entrepreneurship skill in you. You have to learn business customer acquisition, customer retention, 
how to build customers, how to manage relationship, how to hire the right staff, how to retain. All this is business. You need to learn business if you must run, if you must monetize your accounting skill and scale it, you need to learn some business. Finally, the eighth thing I wrote out that accountants are doing wrong in their journey of monetizing their accounting skill and knowledge is they are commonizing their very simple skills instead of selling it. You see how I said this one in a sober way? Let me say it again. They are commonizing their very simple skills instead of selling it. Accountants do not know that even the act of helping an SME to take a book and rule lines on the book and keep clean records is a skill. The SME, the girl, that front desk girl that works in that block industry does not know how to keep records of bags of cement, blocks that were produced, blocks that were sold. Even if it is as much as just buy those books, rule the lines, teach her how to keep the records. As simple as that skill is, it is highly sought. Accountants are commonizing our very simple skills instead of monetizing it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome points. Things we should be doing are not doing. Things we should be focusing on are not paying proper attention. Things we just assumed away might be monies um, that are just going down the drain. And um, if you are just joining in on a conversation this evening, I've been guesting Mrs. Chioma Ifiani Eze, founder of Accounting Hub, trainer of accountants, one that looks at skills and turn it around to make money for you. And we've been looking at this very important subject of leveraging our knowledge as accountants and perhaps friends of accountants uh, and skills to make a lot of money. You are welcome. We go on. Um, Madam, so things that we are supposed to be doing, we are not doing either because we are not aware now, we are not being made aware to pay more attention. What recommendations, therefore, will you give Nigerian chartered accountants so that they can leverage their accounting knowledge and skills to make good money? Uh, underline, good money, money with integrity, uh, which, which, which is our motto, uh, money with accuracy of mind. So what recommendations will you be giving to fellow chartered accountants? so they can leverage their skills. So to leverage your skills and make money, I will be recommending everything I said you were doing wrong. I said you weren't listening to the market. Now listen to the market. When you listen, the market will tell you what exactly they want in an accountant. Hmm. I said you were not skilling up yourself in line with what the market wants. When you listen to the market and they tell you what they want, please go and skill up. I said you were not niching down. You were packing all the accounting services and claiming you do everything. Please pick a niche. I want to do audits. I do taxes. I'm a tax accountant. I do accounting technology. I do whatever it is. Please niche down and be known for something. Be known for something. Become that sports radio station. Not just that a radio station. The number one sports radio station right? Become something, be known for something. I said we're not thinking of scale. Begin to think of scale. Begin to think, how can I, if you teach accounting, how can I teach 5,000 students? By the time you start asking this question to yourself, within the next three months, you will find answers. How can I teach 3,000 accountants? I always do say 50 training and five or six people will come. In the whole year, I've done 50 people. I want to do 3,000 people. How can I do it? Begin to ask questions. Answers will come. Start thinking of scale. I said we're not focusing enough on technology. Begin to look for technology tools 
that allow you to scale. Let me give you an example. I say that I, I have deployed over 600 businesses on the Sage accounting software. Do you think I've met all 600 business owners? No, I haven't. How do you think I scaled that number? I deployed technology. Instead of going to the client, spending hours and days training you, I write a curriculum. Then I go and use a video recording tool. The way I'm talking to you, I record their training. I record their training and the screen. They watch me doing it. Then I send the training videos to them, topic by topic, how to make an invoice, look at the video, how to do this, look at the video, how to do that, look at the video. I send it to them, short, short videos, or oh, three minutes, five minutes, short, short videos. They go through their curriculum, they watch those videos, then I invite you, I invite them into another session where we now take any questions they might have. They absolutely love the training. I can do three businesses in a day. Imagine if I needed to commute to you, go and train you for three days back and forth. How many can I do in a, in a week? Maybe one, at most two, and you'll be all stressed out. Even because of the way I do the training, they have the videos. The support is so minimal because they go back and watch and watch and watch their videos over and over again. So it reduces the effort of calling me back and forth. Madam, that's thing you thought. We cannot remember. Come and teach it again. So I use that time to focus on another business. Now, this is me giving you how I think about scale. The things I do to scale up. I want to deploy software for 100 businesses. I cannot train like this. I cannot do like this. I have to use technology and do like this so that my numbers can go up drastically, right? So that's how I want you to be focusing on technology. What can I use in technology? Can you come for that meeting you suggest? Can we do a Zoom meeting? Let me send you a Zoom link. I pay for my Zoom meetings. In fact, I have Zoom paid for a year. I mean, before you finish talking, I've sent you Zoom link. I'm not commuting around Lagos because you can spend six hours commuting and 30 minutes in the meeting and you wasted the whole day. So you need to start focusing enough on technology. Number six, I said you were not selling yourselves properly. You need to go and learn. How do I sell myself? How do I write better proposals? How do I write, the, um, you know, how do I write teachings that people will find online and it will link them back to me? How do I speak at events? How do I teach SMEs? How do I enter a gathering of SMEs? Start learning how to sell yourself as an accountant. Number seven, I said we're not learning business. Start learning business. Pick an interest in entrepreneurship. How do I acquire customers? How do I retain them? How do I get the best employees? How do I scale my business? How do I <laughs> invest my excess money? How do I, you know, what everything about entrepreneurship. Pick an interest and start learning. Follow those who talk about business. Read what they are writing and just keep learning about business. And lastly, I said you were commonizing your very simple accounting skills and you were not monetizing it. Please stop commonizing your skill. You know how to teach people to keep records properly in a book? The cement industry, down, the block industry down the road is looking for it. You know how to track inventory? The estates that they are building down the road is looking to track inventory. Stop commonizing the simple things that come to you. You know how to use spreadsheets? Please Somebody needs it. Stop commonizing the little things. So that's my recommendation. All of the things I said you were doing wrong, please don't do it wrong again. Very easy, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Chema, is it? What you are doing wrong, stop doing it. It's very akin to our debit and credit. Um, for every negative thing that is happening to you now, uh, naturally, turn it into a positive and a positive mm -hmm. mind. Um, we are going to go on a short break now. And when we come back, field a few more questions. Thanking our online participants. Please stay on. We'll soon be back with you after this break.
You are welcome back. And before we went on break, Mr. Chioma, if I as the FCA, are taking us through so do's and don'ts to so speak the way we sell ourselves and then listen to the market, scaling our skill, um, niche down, niche down. We should not be everything for all men. Um, we should really be specialists. And of course, looking at technology, technology is the new force that the world looks at. And then, of course, we must be so confident and not for sell us, you know, ourselves on our skills. Yes, we are solution providers. That's exactly what we should all just be looking for. And of course, we have to learn business. business. Uh, an American president once said, it's not about the money. He said, hey, hey, but it's about the money. At the end of the day, you've got to be able to learn business. Be entrepreneurial in your thinking. One of the key areas that I know is the fact that the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria has upscaled under the present leadership this Comfort AE tire, our 57th ICAM president. This Comfort AE tire is climbing us into new levels, and we must niche up to that. So, you know, talking about commonalization, don't let us commonize. You are able to keep in this spreadsheet, you don't think it's an issue, it's money waiting to be made. <laughs> and we must not commonize and we must sell, sell, make it other parents. Because at the end of the day, from what Mrs. Chioma um, Fanny Eze has said, a rose smells sweet, no matter how you dangle it, anyway. And I'd like to also thank our online uh, participants. Uh, thank you for your very kind comments. And um, keep them coming in as we move on to closing our question and answers from uh, with Mrs. Uh, Ifeanyi Enze. Now, I look at mentoring and apprenticeship. Hmm. Do you believe an accounting professional requires this? Hmm. Brilliant question. Let's look at the success of the apprentice, apprenticeship system in the Igbos, how the Igbos go and learn a trade. So you see a rich man who has all the money to set up his brother in business, but his brother would rather go and work for him as an apprentice, learning the trade. And after some years, he would go on to establish his own and he would be hmm. successful at it. The Igbo apprenticeship, apprenticeship system, powerful and works. Yes, I agree. I believe that accountants need some sort of apprenticeship and mentoring. The easiest way to walk a journey is to walk in the footprints of the person who has walked it before. The person will just cut down all the mistakes he made and just tell you, put your leg here. No, don't put it there. Put it here. No, not there. Put here, put here. No, jump there. And you would cut short your journey. So why do you want to go and reinvent the wheel and make all the mistakes again when you can just learn from the one who already has walked that journey? After all, they say, follow who Sabi road. That's mentorship. That's apprenticeship. Mm. Yes, I know you're sitting there and you're thinking, ha, huh, if I approach you now to be my mentor, will you agree? The truth is, that person who you want to mentor you may have his own busy life, his own schedule, his own business, and you feel, I like this person. I want this person to mentor me. Do you know that there are people that can mentor you from afar? All you need to do is to watch what they are doing. Success leaves footprints. I repeat, success leaves footprints. A person who has succeeded, I can almost tell his journey, what he did, what he's doing that is working. If you feel like, oh, I've heard of Accounting Hub and that's Madame Chioma's business, what has she done that her accounting firm is popular? What did she do? I'm sure there are footprints I have left that you can pick up and replicate because success leaves footprints. So yes, you need mentorship, 
Yes, the mentor may not even know you one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, the mentor may not even feel that I should spend my time mentoring you. But yes, you can learn from afar. You can have a mentor who you are watching those footprints he has left of success and you're replicating and improving and you're working your way to greatness. So please never discount the role of apprenticeship or mentorship. If you're able to find access to the mentor one-on-one, -on -one, that is brilliant. If you are not, please look out for the footprints of success and follow through. Awesome point. Um, a question just came from Garuba Abdullahi. Thank you for this question and was asking, how can a young accountant identify the right global skills that are globally in demand? Hmm. I think hmm. that the answer to that is listening to the markets. The skills that are globally in demand is what businesses are asking for. What are they asking for? Yes. So if I'm online, I keep seeing what people, I keep, I think a few days ago, I saw a post where they were, a post titled the highest 20 earning jobs or something like that. And there was a financial analyst, a financial advisor in it. So to find the skills that are globally, because his question is global. So this isn't talking about Nigeria, is to have my ears to the ground online. I would see what people are talking about online the kind of skills that are in demand. I'll go on job boards and see what they are really looking for. I'll speak to business owners. What skill are you exactly looking for in an accountant? What have you been looking for? Yes, and I will find the answers I'm looking for. I believe that anything that troubles your heart, anything you pick interest in within three months, in fact, three months is too long, you would find answers. Just start by picking interest. What is the market saying? How can I scale up? How can I scale up? Ask it today, ask it tomorrow. In three months, because you keep asking, you keep researching, it will keep leading you to answers. You keep talking to people about it, you will find answers. Super. And uh, of course, Anthony AK is asking a question perhaps that is self um, answered. He is poor in technology. How do I turn around my situation? Practice, Anthony. Practice. Start from the normal technology tools that accountants should use. Spreadsheets, invoicing software, simple technology tools that an accountant should use. Start from them. YouTube is a great place to learn to use any tool you want to. If you see paid trainings, you can pay and learn those tools and then keep scaling up from there. I've learned how to use this. Now I'm learning how to use this. Now I'm learning how to use this. And then, of course, pick interest. Like I said, once I see any technology tool I've never heard about, I'm doing a Google search, I'm signing up on the free plan, I'm testing it out. Within one week, I've learned it. Yeah, so that's it. Sometimes I just do a Google search. What's this thing about? I, you know, I look at the pricing. If it's a price I can afford, I can pay for it. You know, that's how I keep learning various kinds of technology tools. And I find that people know different kinds of tools. If you go on Facebook now and write, what tool can I use to record my voice and screen? You get no less than 10 answers now, now. <laughs> People know technology. Just ask what you want to achieve. What tool can I use to do this, this? You don't be seeing suggestions flying from everywhere. In yeah. fact, people will even tell you the free one that you don't need to pay anything. They will tell yeah. you the cheapest one. They will even be arguing among themselves. No, this is better than this. You will read comments and you will learn what you're really looking for. Fantastic. And uh, maybe we should quickly just put here today, Oye Komi, um, well, saying that mentorship can be done from afar, but not apprenticeship. Uh, what is the best approach to getting a successful accounting professional for apprenticeship? Yes. Yeah, so um, to get a place to do your apprenticeship, first of all, I think that you should at least choose the niche you want to play in. What exactly do you want to learn? If I want to learn financial modeling, Today, in my mind, I know that the person I, I know that I want to go to is Dr. Brown because I've seen that he knows financial modeling very well. If I want to learn accounting software, I would ask myself, who is the expert that I know and approach that person? Now, when I approach that person, please, can I intern with you for X period of time? Of course, at all times, I'm selling myself because the person has all the right to say no. But when I come with some value proposition, can I, can you, can I intern or can I learn under you 
in exchange, I will do this. I will work with you for six months and offer you my services. I will do this. You know, offer some value. I just see people write, I'm looking for a place to train. I say, hey, okay, keep looking. Because you're not selling yourself. You're not trying to offer anything. So please, when you find the expert and you want to do an apprenticeship, please sell yourself properly. Offer something in exchange for something. You want something from that person. Please offer some value. I will give you this. Please teach me financial modeling. For this period of time, after I learn, I will work for you. I will manage your clients. I will do this. Offer something. Right? And then you can take from that person. Excellent point. And then, of course, look, I come with integrity and I come with character. I uh, am a value partner. So some of the things that the Institute of Chartered Accountants teach us some of those soft aspects. Uh, I quickly just take Tim Tokwe or Jele um, talking about niche. How can accountants working in the industry saddle with internal audit and taxation cope? <laughs> just, just briefly, just briefly. Okay, she's asking about niche. How can accountants working in the industry okay. saddle with internal audit, with internal audit, audit and, and taxation? You can cope. You can cope. If, if that's your niche, internal audit and taxation, that's your niche. Your niche doesn't have to be one thing. It can be two. It can be three. But let it not be 20. Let's know you for something. Yes. So if that's that the is, niche you want, that's your niche. Internal audit and taxation. That's your niche. That is, that is where multitasking comes. And that is where selling yourself is. And, uh, I quickly just say that in closing, uh, madam, if an accountant listening to you, I'm an accountant, I'm a student of accounting, accountancy, growing up, I'm a friend of accountants, and they are listening to you right now. And my finances are not doing well, meaning that I need to make more income to run my life. What should I do now? Mm. If you're listening to me right now, and you're an accountant, and you're saying to yourself, all these things you're speaking, I just need to make money. The first thing I want to say to you, in fact, the only thing I want you to do is to draw out your journey. Have a clear path that in that path, you are seeing how you will make the money. Hmm. So you can talk to an accountant. What's your part? Say, I want to be the senior partner of um, one of the big 10 audit firms. Bros, you can't control that. When I talk about a clear path that you are seeing how you want to make money, please tell me, that the part I want to make money by being a financial modeling expert. I'm going to spend my weekends learning from the guy who does it. Then I will take one month on paid leave and become a master and offer it to businesses. Then I will practice online. In two years, I should be doing it. Tell me a story that is leading me to how you're making the money. A story that you can control the steps. Don't tell me I'm walking towards being the senior partner in KPMG. Excuse me, you can't control that. There are many factors in it that you can't control, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me a path that has monetization in it that you can control. Mm -hmm. I will learn this. I will intern. After my intern, I will practice. I will do like this. Then I will start selling. Then I'll start writing about it. Then I will start doing. Then I will partner with this person. Tell me the part you have planned that are, is made up of controllable steps and leads to the monetization. That's how Super. to monetize your accounting skill. It's been awesome having you doing all these explanations. May we have your final words, Mrs. Chioma Infanyeze, on this subject of we accountants, students of accounting, um, leveraging knowledge and skills to make money. So my final words, there's a lot of money to be made for accountants. I am a personal testimony. My business is going to be six years old and I have worked for <laughs> hundreds of businesses and there's still a lot more. The market is large. Please take every word that we have spoken about today very seriously. I want to believe that you will go back to the YouTube channel of ICANN and play this video again. And if you were not writing, write down the points very carefully and go and execute on them. Because all of the points are things that if you pick them and work on them, your life will be totally transformed. Remember, there is the business of accounting. Put it in front of you, the business of accounting. 
I am an accountant, but I am a business person. Thank you. Beautiful. And you are an entrepreneur by excellence. Thank you very much. We're going to be asking you to come back to shed more light in, in the future. Thanks so much. And I'd like to thank my online participants. We are not done yet. We're going on a short break. And when we come back, we'll tell you and give you a bit more about Icon on Air and what to expect going forward. Stay on. We'll soon be back. Thank you very much for uh, been hosting. I want to particularly thank our online participants. Thank Mrs. Fiany Enze for being so eclectic today. I, I, I'm sure you've enjoyed your outing here this, this evening. Students who are listening to you, friends of being counters are listening to you. What will you say? Thank you so much, everyone that joined in. I absolutely enjoyed it. This is a topic that is very dear to my heart. I love to teach accountants how to make money from the skill. I especially want to thank ICANN for this. This is an amazing platform to bring accountants, professionals together to talk about the topics that bother us. This is beautiful. Everyone who sat down to think about this and put this together, thank you so much. To the fabulous hosts, Mr. Akin Fatsuke, FCA. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> thank you for chasing me around and bringing me here. Thank you so much. <laughs> and the thanks is to you and my editorial team, uh, my president, Institute of Terror Accountants of Nigeria, and the council who, in their thinking, believe we should continually do this. And this is not going to be the end. Our next offering is going to be Thursday, January 13. 2022 and the time of course will be 6 p.m west african time then it will be online the icon social media handle uh, please go on there like icon so that you can be easily prompted and the topic we are going to be looking at will be the nigerian consumer and the challenge of substandard products the nigerian consumer and the challenge of substandard products we are will be guesting Babatunde Irukera, Esquire, who by definition is the samurai, the vice chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCP, formerly Consumer Protection Council. Let me leave you with this quote. Making money isn't hard in itself. What is hard is to end it doing something worth devoting one's life to. End of quote. That is attributable to Carlos Ruiz Safon. You be the change you would like to see. Until we come your way, January 13, 2022, I remain Akifatunke, your uncle. I can on air. Bye for now. <laughs>